morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 462 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Do, 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 do. Cryo Media. Yeah. Today, recording day is Wednesday, September 4th, 2024. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a beautiful day here at the Beaver Lodge. In fact, there's no rain in the forecast until, uh, well, uh, for the next couple of days. Everything says 0%. Yes. So it's going to be quite dry for the the next little bit. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver. Pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, hey. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, the Peppermaster, The Miss V, Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Going to have a short one for you today because Mr. Grizzly has a hard out. But, Mr. Grizzly, how is your mental health today? Uh, I think it's okay, allergy-wise. It uh, <laughs> could be better, but mental health, I think I'm okay for the most part. Um, had a had a quiet evening at home with Lola. After I took her out for a nice walk at around 8 o'clock. We were out for about an hour, and uh, yeah, it was just a mellow evening. Oh, good, good. Uh, us too. Uh, we went out uh, for dinner, went out for some uh, sushi, which was nice. A beautiful restaurant here in Kingston called Sapporo, if you ever have a chance, uh, if you're in town, to go there. Uh, the owners, it's, it's a mom and pop shop. Uh, the uh, gentleman uh, there has been a sushi chef, sushi, sushi chef. <laughs> That's now I'm going to have trouble with that all day, you realize. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for 46 years. So, um, plus they have a wonderful all-you-can-eat option. Yum, 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 yum. I'm so, going to take a, a hard pass on that. Yes, yes. Well, they have other stuff too, of course. Yeah, it's not I don't. Just I, they have stuff from the kitchen. Don't but, go to seafood restaurants if, you don't, if you're allergic to seafood, period. Yes, you absolutely. Just, you just shouldn't. There's too much risk. Should. Yes, cross-contamination for sure. Um all right, uh, kids and cubs, let's get right into it. Um, I'm going to start, Mr. Grizzly, because I know you want to go somewhere. I'm just going to mm-hmm. give a little lead in that's going to bring you there because I know you have something. Um, yesterday, it seems that um, if you live in Ontario, your premier, uh, who I like to refer to as Porky Pig, because he is the pig of pork yes. in the province. Um, revealed some news yesterday. Um, And I will read this. This is from iPolitics. Ontario Premier Doug Ford has ruled out calling an election this year, but wouldn't say whether he's considering sending voters to the polls in 2025. As we know, speculation has been running rampant for months that Ford is preparing to pull the plug on the legislature. Everybody thought that this whole 19-week pause was him laying the groundwork. And he certainly wasn't denying it, not at all. Uh, But he will not say 
if he's planning uh, to uh, pull the plug before 2026, spring of 2026 is when he should be going. Uh, this speculation has intensified in recent days after it was reported that the progressive conservatives have launched their candidate nomination process for the next vote. For his part, Ford has repeatedly refused to keeping the 2026 election date, though on Monday he said voters wouldn't head to the ballot boxes this year. Quote, we aren't having any elections this year. We're going to continue making sure that we focus on what the people of Ontario needs, and that's good paying jobs, making sure we have good health care, good education, good infrastructure, and that's where we're and that's what we're going to continue doing. Okay. Uh you need to start. Sir. Because you haven't done that yet. You're not going to continue doing this. You haven't started this yet and i believe that this is the first direct quote where he talks about an election because it's been speculation but i've never heard him say or read a quote of him saying yes we are thinking about calling a snap election so this seems to be the first public acknowledgement of anything about an early election but not ruling it out though whenever the next election comes it's clear the PCs are already starting the groundwork to get candidates in place. In an email opt obtained by QP Briefing, Michael Diamond, president of the PC party, recently sent an official notice informing members about the opening of the nomination process for the next Ontario general election and giving them until December to confirm if they will be seeking re-election. So that's how we know. When asked by reporters why there would be a deadline in place if he wasn't planning on an election, Ford said, You always have to be prepared. Uh, that's the line you use when you're in a minority government. Yes. And everybody else can take you down. If you've got a majority government, you don't always have to be prepared because you unilaterally decide when the call comes. So that's a big shovel full of bullshit. Usually parties only start to ramp up their nominations about within a year from the date of the election. Political strategists say that the election timing could be affected by outside factors, such as the possibility of the PC's reputation being affected by a possible federal conservative party government led by Pierre Poliev, or more information coming out about the RCMP investigation into the Greenbelt land sweeps and land swap scandal. Gee, I wonder if Doug Ford placed a call to some of his friends at the OPP that operate his gravy plane and um, asked them, hey, how close are you to a... Uh, Laying charges. Do I have another year? Guys, come on. You can tell me. Mm -hmm. And there might be another reason why uh, Doug Ford has decided that maybe now is not the good time to come to an election. And uh, it involves the Ontario Science Center. Oh, boy. Take it away. City inspectors scrambled to respond to Ontario to Ontario Science Center shutdown documents show. So it says here, on the day uh, that the Ontario Science Center was abruptly shuttered this summer, the City of Toronto staff were rushed to the building to inspect it, but didn't mark down any immediate hazards, according to documents obtained by CTV News through the FOIA, or Freedom of Information Act. Instead, the inspector noted that the critical in quotation mark, roof panels, had already been secured, taking photos of the work that had been done and visually inspecting the rest of the building, according to the records, which also detail an earlier effort by the Science Center to fix a part of its roof. Critical areas short as per engineer's report and no immediate concerns observed based on random sample areas looked at, wrote Inspector Brett Martin, according to the records. That was the same day the science center was dramatically shut down with just hours notice with provincial government officials highlighting the potential danger of collapsing roof panels identified in an engineering report. Turned out that the engineering report they relied on gave other options than closing the building, including <gasps> cutting off potentially unsafe areas. Critics, including the firm of the architect who designed the building, have said that the building could be saved. Responding to questions from CTV News in an unrelated news conference Wednesday, Infrastructure Minister Kinga Surma said the ministry was putting safety first. We knew that children were going to be within the building. We shared that information with the board, and the board made a decision to close the science center down. It's an unfortunate circumstance, but we're now working with the board on a new science center and an interim location, she said. We had to make sure that we prioritize the health and safety of the workers and the children and families that will be coming in and out of the building throughout the summer, Surma said. Around mm -hmm. 50 Science Center staff remain working in the Science Center, packing up exhibits for storage. The building is planned to be fully evacuated by October 31st, 2024. 
In a statement in July, Science Center Board Chair John Carmichael and CEO Paul Kortner described the decision-making process this way. Our Board of Trustees voted to close the building based on a recommendation from the Ministry of Infrastructure and the CEO of the Science Center. The City of Toronto documents detail applications to work on three different areas of the Science Center. uh, Rerouting a kitchen hood fire suppression exhaust duct, replacing four doors, and fixing roof panels on the roof for the Center's rainforest room that had become distressed because of moisture ingress. The permit for the kitchen hood was granted in 2023, the records show. But the permit for the doors and roof panels was still in progress was still in progress by June 2024. On June, thir- on June 3rd, a city examiner wrote to Infrastructure Ontario and a roofing contractor saying, in quotation, examination of your building permit application has revealed that certain requirements of the Ontario Building Code and or other applicable bylaws have not been satisfied. Pointing to sections of the Conservation Authorities Act, the Ontario Heritage Act, and the Building Transit Faster Act. On June 7th, a city building engineer wrote to the same group, asking to provide it with a set of stamped drawings. It's not clear, excuse me, whether the agencies responded, and on the day the Science Centre was shut down, emails from city officials show there was no permit granted. The emails show that the city officials heard the building was closing, as most of the public did, through the news media. They shared a CP24 news alert that described the building's closure as breaking news, and Inspector Martin arrived on site at 6 p.m. Elsa Lamb of Canadian Architect Magazine said in an interview that the back and forth is typical of building permit applications and a sign that maintenance was going on in a building that was showing its age. Nobody was anticipating a closure to come this suddenly. It really came out of the blue, she said, adding that the city inspector's conclusion and observation that the critical panels were supported underscored the lack of real urgency that could have justified a sudden shutdown. The urgent things were done as they needed to be done and there was no immediate danger. The closure was a complete was a completely political decision, she said. What does all this mean? Well, let's take a look at who owns the land around the Science Center. Oh. It um, seems to be uh, a, a developer buddy of Doug's. Oh, really? I'm pulling it up here right now. Uh, hmm. Sorry, I, I should have had it prepped, but it, it closed. Dogs. Gee, what were the odds of that? Hmm. So the province owns the Science Center building while the city of Toronto owns the land. The Science Center operated under, under a 99-year lease between the province, the city of Toronto, and the Toronto and Regional Conservation Authority, which oversees conservation efforts throughout the region. Uh, now, the land north of the Toronto of the Science Center, yeah, that is owned by a developer friend. Matter of fact, I've got a, a, a photograph here. I'm going to pull up and show you, so we can see the Science Center in the lower uh, in the lower section of this photograph. You'll see it in a second here, uh, squared off in yellow, and the red section under development is owned by one of Doug Ford's buddies. <gasps> There's an overlapping section. Look at that. Look at that, eh? It's a tiny little sliver of it, but there's an overlapping section. And I guess the whole section in red outside of the zone of the Ontario Science Center uh, must be particularly valuable. Well, I'll read this to you because it's hard to see on the screen there. So I'll just read it. It says... Second, I'm going to bring it over here. The science, the grift goes like this. The Science Center opened in 1969, designed to last 250 plus years. Five years ago, a developer family close to Doug Ford bought 60 plus acres adjacent to the Science Center. That's the section I showed you a moment ago in red. One month later, one month later, Ford announces that the last stop on the, uh, on the new Ontario Line subway will be the Science Center. Ford closes the Science Center immediately, permanently. Its property, that I showed you in yellow, will be repurposed. His engineering report says the Science Center needs maintenance, does not say it needs to be closed. Ford is away on vacation. Construction and demolition equipment are already on site across the road, set to go to work before the public can intervene. Ford, never known for moving fast, unveils and executes a plan to turn a world-class Ontario icon into condos on a Friday then disappears before anyone can answer the phone at Queen's Park. Cha-ching. 
the same family that brought up property along the canceled high, Highway 413 route when Ford resurrected the highway to nowhere, the value of the family's land went up $8.3 billion. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing. He's handing this over to a buddy because the building needs to be condemned and torn down, but it was designed to last 250 plus years. And when did it open again? When did it open again? 1969. That's um, 55 years ago. So there's about, you know, almost 200 years, 195 years left on its design. Mm-hmm. But again, let's, let's look at that photograph again um, because you see he, he's going to have the line and at the science center. And you see mm-hmm. all this adjacent land at the science center in mm-hmm. yellow. Mm-hmm. That's science center land. And then mm-hmm. this is his buddy's land right here mm-hmm. where he's going to mm-hmm. put condos. And hey, you know what we could put? Hey, we need to intensify where people live around subway lines. I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll just, um, I'll just lease this to him for 200 years at a dollar a year or something like that. And he can build he can build on it because the city of Toronto owns the land. So Doug can't just summarily sum, su- uh, sell it. Folks, the grift is in. The grift is yeah. in. Can you send me that thing, Mr. Grizzly? I'll send you a link, yeah. That is um, the, 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 the map and the grift thing. Wow. Wow. Interesting indeed. So he calls the last stop the Ontario Science Center even though he plans to eliminate the science center so that he can have a subway station for mm-hmm. intensifying building. Because we got to build the homes, yeah. even though he's not building any homes. Not building any homes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, wow. Um, I think we have a breaking news. Doug Ford loves his kneecaps. <laughs> Well, yep. Um, see, that's what happens when you make um, billion dollar promises to people who expect you to follow up on them. And yep. then something goes wrong and you can't deliver. Then you scramble to try to find other ways. And Dougie's finding so many other ways. Here's a more detailed image for you. This detail in it. We have, yes, we have Service Ontario. And then we have the LCBO thing. And it, it just seems really interesting. Interesting that every single thing that he's finding it a priority to do seems to involve transferring public good to private entities. Well, and if you take a look at all of uh, everything around there, you can see this clearly. These are, what are these? What are these right here? Oh my goodness, look at these large apartment buildings where people already live. Mm-hmm. Oh, but look, here's a field. Oh, no, no that, that's not going to work because that's got hydro lines. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. So that can't work. Oh, boy. Well, why don't we just take this gigantic chunk of forested land where the science center is and just hand it over to my buddy who's already started to build it and there's the crosstown that's going to be i think well it's corporate offices but somewhere along here is where the end of the line is Mm -hmm. so you see this parking lot for the ontario science center and there's the ontario science center the royal astronomical society of canada another parking lot i don't know what this building is if this this is 770 Don Mills Road. I, I don't know if that is management offices for the Ontario Science Center. I don't know. There seems to be a Royal Bank in there. Oh, no, yeah, that's an ATM. That's an ATM. That's an ATM. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know what this building is. I would assume, let's see if we can just drop a, yeah, we can drop somebody there and have a look. What do we got here? This looks like, I would assume this has got something to do with the Science Center. Oh, there, what's that say? Come on, come on. What's the sign say? Science Center. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Administrative buildings. Yeah. Yeah. It's administrative buildings for the Science Center. So you can see that is a gigantic chunk of land. That's 
yeah, gigantic is an understatement. Yes. <laughs> wow. Like, I mean, well, look, look at the size of that building. So this yeah. whole, like all of this, all science center related. Then you've got this lovely forest here that, oh, that's going to disappear. And the administrative building is almost is probably bigger than the Ontario oh, it Science is. Center itself. It is. It is. Because they'll, they'll store things in there that, you know, because right. they rotate out. Yes. Uh, yeah. But it, it's bigger. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and again, like I said, look here, look at there's, there's some tall apartment buildings there. Well, let's just build a whole bunch more right here. Look at all mm. these streets already named Kyle Lowry. Kyle Lowry's got a street named after him. Hmm. Former Toronto Raptor, Kyle Lowry. Hmm. There's a little populism for you. Yeah. That's okay though. I like Kyle Lowry. He's a good guy. Yeah. yeah, But still. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is the grift that Doug is, is, is provide his friends. Hmm. Gee, really interesting. Um, so I, I yeah, like I said, I, I think we kind of figured out why it is he's not willing to call an election because I have a feeling that, uh, this story is going to uh, take off. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, sorry. In a normal world, in a nation that has normal media that isn't already bought and paid for, this is a story that would take off. Yes, it would. Absolutely, it would. Yes. So, uh, but we tend to have uh, bought and paid for media and some of the world's least curious journalists. So, I don't know. Maybe this will just be a one day story. But Doug or, is clearly afraid that it won't be. Or, or we can keep it rolling so that it doesn't stay a one day story. Now, I, I realize we don't have the poll that, that a lot of other podcasters and media companies have, but you know. Uh, let's play telephone. Mm -hmm. We'll share this with as many people as we humanly can. Absolutely. Wow. Nice, nice, nice. Some good sleuthing there. No, oh, thanks. I did, a ah. I did a little bit of reading. <laughs> I do have another thing too that I want to talk about that I started off the show with how he hates workers and labor unions because he says he's for the labor unions. Except here's the thing. Uh, Doug Ford's plan to help gig workers make it easy to misclassify workers and pay them less than minimum wage. <laughs> I can't even make this oh up. Oh my God. This, this is from 2022 now, but I, I, I'm bringing it up because it needs to be discussed. Labor experts say Ford's law will create second class Ontario workers. Experts say Doug Ford's much hyped Working for Workers Act does not actually ensure gig workers get paid the minimum wage and that it provides them with less protections than they already ought to receive under the Employment Standards Act. Now, the Ontario government announced legislation to rebalance the scales and improve working conditions for gig economy workers at Instacart, Uber, and others. In reality, the legislation does little to help these workers who've been misclassified as independent contractors. While promoted as a minimum wage for gig workers, Gig Workers United President Jennifer Scott points out the actual legislation doesn't care, doesn't guarantee the minimum wage per hour worked. It only covers time spent fulfilling order, orders. Engage time is the piece we can't control, Scott told Press Progress. I don't control how many orders I'm sent. The app controls that, Scott said, adding, it's a daily reality that many gig workers will only get one or two orders per hour. By analogy, Scott said this would be like only paying a grocery store worker for the time spent ringing each customer through rather than per hour spent in uniform and at work. Apply engaged time to a grocery store, their shift might be 4, to, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. This, but this would mean they only get paid when there was a, a customer they were ringing through. Nobody would say that's an appropriate way to pay those grocery <laughs> store workers. The, what this is, folks, if you don't know, it's piecework. And piecework is, I, I cannot stand it. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Now, I know friends who worked in an industry I worked in years ago were earning $100,000 a year doing piecework. But they would also sit in their vehicle for up to 14, sometimes 16 hours waiting for calls to come in. While they're sitting there, they're not getting paid. They only get paid for the piecework they do, which means if you install a component, you get paid $30. If you activate a, a line, you get paid 10 Here's the other thing. Inspectors would go around and look at your work, and if you didn't put the proper tagging on the line that you activated, they would claw back what they paid you. I've seen this happen to people. 
So you got paid and then they go, oh, you made a mistake. We're taking all that money back. Mm-hmm. This happened. This wasn't under the Ford government, by the way. This, this, this was taking place under previous governments. This goes back to uh, Dalton McGinty when he first got in, when that took place on, a, on a, an industry I used to work in. I'm not going to say because I can't have them rain hell down upon me, but I do know of some class action lawsuits that changed things. I don't know what became of the suits, but anyway. This uh, proposed Digital Platform Workers' Rights Act 2022 only requires the payment of minimum wage for each work assignment performed by a worker and not for all of the time spent by workers on the app waiting for work assignments. This isn't a $15 minimum wage as it has been presented in some media, but rather it is probably more likely rolling $9 to $12 minimum wage depending upon the work opportunities available at the time. Mandrick also noted that the bill does not guarantee other key protections that employees enjoy under the ESA, the Employment Standards Act, like overtime pay, vacation pay, and severance and termination pay. A better approach, according to Mandrick, would have been to shore up the rights of gig workers and others under the ESA through measures to prevent employee misclassification. Creating a standalone bill creates confusion and feeds into the false narrative that platform-based gig workers are different from other workers in a legally significant way. In reality, they face the same problems regarding misclassification and wage theft as workers in industry like construction, cleaning, and traditional delivery and courier services. They just use an app to perform the work. These workers deserve full and equal protections under the ESA. Sorry, just I'm, the exasperation level. How Doug Ford likes to say he cares about workers. He doesn't give a damn about you. Mm-hmm. He yeah. doesn't care. He yeah. never has. Yeah. You know he did uh, cost averaging for overtime. Mm-hmm. Which basically, the way it works is under the Ontario... Uh, Labor Standards Act, your Employment Standards Act, if you work 44 hours a week, you get paid your regular per hour wage if you're a per hour wage employee. If you work more than 44 hours, you get paid overtime for that week. Some employees would pay you overtime per day if you work a 12-hour shift when you're scheduled for eight. Other employee, uh, other employers will, okay, we'll knock off. You can leave early on Friday so you get your 44 and we're not paying you overtime. You get free time off, blah, 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 blah. What he was doing was, so say you were normal scheduled working hours for the month, and we'll use 40 as, as a metric. So that's 160 hours in a four-week work period, right? Let's say the first two weeks you work 20 hours per week, and the last two weeks you work 60 hours per week. That would entitle, to, to, to entitle you to 40 hours of overtime under the current, uh, no, sorry, under the former standards. Under the new standards, they average that out over the month, which means you've only done 160 hours you get no overtime. Mm -hmm. He says that makes us competitive. I say it destroys people's lives and makes uh, companies, gives companies the ability to abuse employees. And we can't have this anymore. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Angela Jordan's mom here in the chat saying, they just removed inquest recommendations for those who die on the job to rule out foul play or to make safety standards to protect people. We are reverting in history to make Doug money. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kit PNC bio. Thank God someone's making sure workers are getting fucked. I was worried conservatives were putting forward legislation to help workers. Phew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Unbelievable. Oh my God. This guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I see comments in the chat, right? Bonnie, Bonnie Crombie will be just as bad. Bonnie Crombie is a wolf in sheep's closing. You know what? At this point, I'm willing to give her a shot to see whether or not she is or not. I, I think than, she is. Rather than honest. not, rather than ruling her out just because she might be, mm. or she will no. be, or that she has a track record of showing like this. But I mean, this guy, yeah, I mean, it's the guy. option. <laughs> just... I, I think Merritt Stiles has a better chance because the Liberal Party of Ontario is just in such disarray. Oh, yeah. It's absurd. I have no idea where they are. They're, no. they're literally invisible. Yeah, they are. They are. They have been for quite some quite some time now. Like I just, yeah, I, I don't know what strategy they're using. This, but I mean, it just seems to me that you know they should be in everyone's face and you know running to a camera and a mic at every opportunity. I mean, the Lord knows He's given everybody opportunities. But yeah, yeah, I'm not. Uh, ugh. 
I'm disheartened. Yeah, to say the least. Jeez. How much can this asshole get away with? It, it, well, as much as we let him. And we let him when we don't vote. Which is, again, uh, and I cannot stress this enough, I, I believe we need to table legislation and pass it so that when an election, the writ is dropped, an election is called, polls are not released to the public. Polls are only released to the parties, and they cannot release that information to the public. Because I guarantee you it swayed it in the last election in Ontario. Because mm. newspapers and television com- uh, media companies were reporting, well, Doug Ford's the man. He's going to win. He's got his landslide victory. We can yes. already see it. Yeah. A lot of people just get so dissuaded by that. You know, you've worked a 12-hour shift on construction, as an example. Or maybe you're an EMS worker. Or maybe you're, you take care of children. You work in a daycare. You're, you're physically and emotionally exhausted. And you read in the paper that, well, Doug Ford's going to win anyway. So it's like, well, my vote doesn't count. I can't even be bothered. Yep. The extra effort it's going to take for me to go to stand in line and cast my ballot. Now, that being said, I've never stood in line for more than 10 minutes in my entire life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not like at the U.S. where you might have to stand around for 7, 8, 9, 10 hours. Mm-hmm. But still, at the end of a long work day, when you are tired, you just want to go home, take a shower, have a bite to eat and relax because you're exhausted. People are dissuaded. And this is how they control voting. So one of the things we need to do is, actually, I think we need to do three things. This is a three-pronged approach, okay? One, once the writ is dropped, no more polls released to the public. Two, make it a holiday. Three, mandatory voting. Mm. And mandatory voting with an incentive. You know, yes. You get a, a tax break on something or, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm seeing the comments again. Seriously, Bonnie Crombie? Oh my God, might as well keep Ford. No, not might as well keep Ford. No, he's, he's Not terrible. might as well keep Ford. No. I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I, I do empathize. <laughs> I do understand what you're saying, but no, we can't keep this. No, you, you, don't, you don't might as well keep Ford. You switch like this and hope that the other person will be better. I guess, or we'll have learned or hope that they don't want to commit political suicide. You hope this. And yes, she might be exactly the same person. She might be Doug Ford in a dress. Well, Dalton McGinty was not a liberal. No, not at, at all. all. Not he at wasn't. all. No, no. Like this. And, you know, or of course, Merritt Styles from Rex Reiner. I mean, we do have other options, you know, but you, you don't rule someone out without having given them a chance. Exactly. Right. Just because you think she will be the same as the person that's there. That's, that, that's just tying your hands behind your back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, what you were talking about the media, however, that's what, what I keep on calling the politics of inevit- inevitability. Yes. Because, like I said, our media seems to be bought and paid for. So they're there to push the narrative that whatever candidate that most aligns with them, right? The candidate that most aligns with them is the one that's going to win. Yes. And then they just pump the news story and they pump the news story. They're doing the same thing with Pierre right now yes. at the federal level. It's inevitable. Give up, pack it up. He's going to yeah. win. He's got such a far lead. Stop oh, that. look, another poll. Look, oh, yep, yeah, the poll. Like this, and they, they look at polls. And they say, oh, the poll says he's leading by 14. But, you know, the polls also indicate that his personal popularity isn't all that great. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the party is leading because people want change or they're bored with the guy that's there now. But they're not particularly enamored with the guy that's leading the other party because even despite those numbers, the guy leading the party is a drag. Yes. That's also part of the story. So it's like, Pierre is not inevitable. People would like him to be gone too. The question is, is do they want Justin more gone more than they want a Pierre? Because they know Pierre is not going to be great. No. It's the same thing with Bonnie Crombie. The question is, do you want to take a chance and hope Stop that she'll be better? I guess, or have you already decided? I guess, and now 
you've reduced your choices or you've increased the likelihood that the guy that you really want gone does stay. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying vote for Bronny Crombie. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not saying that at all. <laughs> I'm just saying let her present her campaign. Let, let's look if she's going to. No, don't she, put your fingers in her ears, in your ears before she speaks. Right. That, that is, that's a because stupid she, thing. She might be different. She might be different provincially than she was municipally. Might. Might. We don't you know. You have to see what it is that she's going to propose. You have to see what type of team that she assembles. And see comments like, well, she invited Christy Clark to come and speak. Oh, yeah, I know. We invited Christy Clark to speak. And, you know, we don't have, don't much like Christy Clark anymore. Yes, but um, she won several times in British Columbia. British Columbia seemed to be happy with her for a good amount of time. If I'm not mistaken, the carbon tax in BC did come in under her. I believe it did. Christy Clark. So, I mean, now she's not. <laughs> we all knew that the BC liberals were really conservatives. Oh, yes. Right. So it was just a, just a tagline, but you know, she did some good stuff. She did some stuff that wasn't great. Clearly she's a conservative. I mean, we've seen mm -hmm. it in her comments since she's left the premiership and, and we know it there, but you know, it's like as bad as Christy Clark was, she wasn't a Doug Ford. No, she no. wasn't a Grant divine. She wasn't a Scott Moe. My God, there was only one of him. Yeah, really. Jeez. So, you know, uh, again, you have to compare your alternatives to each other, not the Almighty. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's Gordon Campbell that put it in. You're right. Sorry. You're right. Crit RMR. You're correct. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, Gordon yeah. Campbell. Right. Was he before her? I, I, I can't don't remember. Read. I can't I'm terrible remember. remembering my BC premieres at the moment. Well, I don't, I don't live there and, and it is far away. Yes, but still, and, and they I mean, tend not God, to be as, I'm a political junkie. I should remember this, but they tend not to be as terrible as those, those their counterparts in Alberta. Yes. Gordon Campbell came in before Christy Clark. So he put it in. She never campaigned on, on removing it. Okay. Right. She didn't do the whole, well, oh my God, this is killing you and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, Gordon Campbell was there from 2001 to 2011, Christy Clark, 2011 to 2017. I mean, and she took over for, from him. So, right, because the liberals were in power from 2001 to 2017, 16 years. Right. Speaking of 16 years, <laughs> um, Scott Moe uh, did something yesterday um, and uh, kind of got himself owned oh. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because as you know, they're going into an election in Saskatchewan and then a uh, Scott Moe <laughs> decided to post this yesterday with the theme of going back to school. Um, if you will uh, read that, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, well, let's see. What does Mr. Moe have to say? I see the NDP is now promising to improve education and build new schools faster. Just a reminder that the last time the NDP was in government, they closed 176 schools. That's an average of one school a month closed for 16 years. The best indicator of future behavior is past behavior. All right. That line, the best indicator of future behavior is past behavior. Now, that's a line you have to be very careful when you use it because that's a two-way street. Yeah. And, um, well... Um, a lady named Mira Conway, who is a member of the Legislative Assembly of Saskatchewan mm -hmm. for the NDP, um, responded with this, uh, Mr. Chrisley. Uh, yeah. Speaking of 16 years, that's almost the length of time you've been in power. And after 17 years of Saskatchewan party rule, we're last in education and healthcare. Stop fighting so hard to keep us there. Oh! And remember, oh. remember where universal healthcare came from? Tommy mm -hmm. Douglas in the province of Saskatchewan. Mm-hmm. And Saskatchewan's last in healthcare. 
and education. Mr. Douglas is not upset and not not pleased. I guarantee you, he uh, is spinning in his grave. Mm-hmm. Gee. When the NDP was in government for 16 years, they did that. Uh, your SAS party has been in power for 16 years, and where are we now? Yeah, 17 years. Let's look at your, power. let's look at your past behavior, and see how it wow. predicts future behavior, Scott Moe. The man who actually killed a woman while he was drunk. Mm-hmm. Went bankrupt. Yeah. Well, the bankruptcy thing, I'm not going to pick on him for. That happens to a lot of us. It happened to me. I understand that, but. But it's it's the but guy leading who, a province. Who, well, yeah. Well, it, it, the difference being that when you lead a province, you, but when you lead a province, you have uh, well, you do have advisors, and of course, some of those advisors, like in the province of Ontario, Doug Ford claims his is the only government in history that didn't raise taxes. Okay, that that may be true. I'll have to do some digging to verify that, but. He has added over a hundred billion dollars in debt in six years, a hundred billion, instead of funding things with tax revenues. Personal income taxes would need to be thirty percent higher to cover the sixteen billion dollar gap each year. And what else has Doug done? Well, he just spent two hundred and twenty-five million to end a contract with the LCR, the uh, beer store, so that he can sell beer and wine and ready-to-drink cocktails in corner stores and gas stations. Okay, but we're going to lose a ton of revenue from that because revenues that the LCBO generate go into uh, tax coffers that help fund things like health care. So we're about to lose a bunch of money that way. Oh, what else did he do that cost us $2 billion in tax revenue? He eliminated license plate stickers. Okay, I don't need a sticker, but why don't I just renew every year for the same amount of money online? No, you don't have to do that anymore. That's a $2 billion hit. Meanwhile, he keeps running up the debt. Conservatives are not good with the public money. They never have been. Never. It's been proven time and time again. What do they do? Their fiscal conservatism is is cut social programs for people who desperately need it and increase public welfare for those who are already wealthy. That's all they've ever done. Oh, and, and, and let's not forget the wonderful things that generate revenue for the country that they sell off to left, right, and center. The list of things under the Harper government, I think there's about a dozen things he sold off to different nations. We made a profit. Look at, we, should we balance the budget? No, he didn't. You eliminated tax revenue by selling things off to private countries and corporations so you could show a, a positive book. We're in, the, we're in the black. Yeah, but what happens when we don't have that tax revenue next year? Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, they just cut a program. Mm-hmm. They're not good with money. They never have been. Yeah, indeed, 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 indeed. All right, uh, moving to other topics, uh, kits and cubs. Today is the day that the Bank of Canada will be announcing whether or not it will be cutting interest rates yet again. Uh, it seems so. Uh, all signs seem to be pointing to yes. The big debate seems to be is whether or not it will be 25 basis points or 50 basis points. Mm-hmm. Um, people were saying that it could possibly be 50 basis points. I think the, op- the chances of this have reduced, uh, given that uh, Canada's GDP numbers um, for the uh, second quarter of this year came in way higher uh, than expected when we were reporting on this last week, um, when we were talking about inflation numbers, uh, we were saying that the Bank of Canada had estimated that GDP had grown by 1.5 percent this quarter, uh, and uh, you know previously we had said like you know three quarters ago it was 0.2 percent, and then it was 0.6 percent, and then 1.5 percent was what was estimated. And we were showing you also previously um, some OECD and uh, International Money F- Monetary Fund projections stating that Canada would probably have the strongest economy in the G7 uh, next year in 2025, uh, even though it wouldn't be growing, uh, growing at 1.8% or something like that. Um, The numbers for the second quarter came in at 2.1% growth instead of 1.5. 
which is way uh, more than expected. Uh, that's not a statistically insignificant change from 1.5 to 2.1% when it comes to GDP growth. Um, so uh, that might be that the economy is heating up a little and the Bank of Canada wants to kind of keep it cool. So uh, cutting by 0.5 may be less likely today uh, than it was a few weeks ago. Um, now the U.S. Fed will also be announcing later this month whether or not they'll be cutting and there seems to be some pressure for them to start with a cut of 0.5. Uh, but as we've been mentioning and has been confirmed in other uh, media that I've been reading since, um, that uh, any cut in the United States uh, rate will definitely increase the odds that there will be more cuts uh, coming in the Canadian rate. Of course, people have already been predicting more cuts in the Canadian rate all the way to the end of uh, 2025. That could bring uh, the Bank of Canada's uh, base rate to 2.75%, and it's currently at 45 So there might be a, a decent amount of uh, additional relief coming for people um, who have higher costs of living, either because they had a, a variable mortgage or if they have to renew, um, probably it would be recommended uh, by the financial, uh, by your financial experts uh, to renew for a shorter term so uh, or not lock in so that you can take advantage of the rates when they do go down uh, by the end, of, especially uh, by the end of next year. Because, the, you know, from 5% to 2 to 2.75% in the base rate is a significant amount of money mm -hmm. monthly uh, mm -hmm. going towards interest. So uh, if, you're, if you're one of these people that are caught in the in-between times who needs to renew uh, something to consider, and please don't rely on us for financial advice because even less than reporters, we are <laughs> financial experts. Uh, but it seems that the strategy, at least this is what our mortgage broker re recommended to us before the rates went up. He said, yes, you know, allow the rates go up. You are going to feel a pinch like this, but as all things, it's a pendulum that will swing, will come down. And when it comes back down, then choose your moment to lock in. You'll be paying more temporarily, which we have, and we've been paying a whole lot more temporarily. Uh, we've been feeling it. Um, but when it goes back down to something like about 2.75, there's very, very, unless like it cup, it's, it goes down to 2.75. And at that moment, as that's happening, boom, we go into recession and they have to cut some more mm -hmm. to stimulate the economy. That's probably about as low as it'll go. Uh, right. And then if you want to lock in, yeah, maybe, maybe around there, uh, which, which will be a better rate because if you locked in around five or 4.5, and then usually there's a premium for locking in that goes on top of that. Um, that's a lot of, um, additional unnecessary money that's going out if you have the ability to ride out or uh, negotiate a shorter than a five-year term mm -hmm. while the rates are at their highest. Yes, or just remaining on a variable rate until they go down at that point. Uh, so that's the advice I've been getting. So we'll find that out later today. Uh, of course, this is going to be more news that's going to make Pierre Poliev spit. Pierre Poliev had absolutely nothing to say about the fact that the economy grew by 2.1% last quarter rather than one. Well, I mean, you know, inflation goes up. Uh, Justin Trudeau was responsible for this. Inflation goes down. Mm -hmm. Bank of Canada cuts silence. Yeah. Uh, people across Canada have also been sending pictures of, um, you know, when you go to the gas station, they have the billboard up there that tells you what the price of gas is. Mm -hmm. And uh, seeing how, wow, Thanks, it's Trudeau. like, I don't remember the last time that it's been a while since the price of gas has been this low. And yeah. um, it's, of course, nobody's... Uh, mentioning that the price of gas uh, might actually be lower uh, than it was before uh, this year's carbon regulatory pricing increase? Correct. That is correct, sir. It is lower. So um, when uh, so what, Pierre's running around the tax? <laughs> yeah, when Pierre's running around the country saying, ax the t because ax the tax is one thing, but the whole thing, the whole thing, if you add all the words, you know, don't limit yourself to just three, it's just ax the tax. And your lives will be fine again. It's like now, we, if you've been paying attention to the show, you know that the portion of the price of stuff that the carbon tax represents is not even one percent of the price of the stuff that you buy. So, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of goods, right? might be a little different for your home heating. Mm -hmm. Might be one or two percent or something. But 
if you're saving, you know, a penny or a penny and a half on the dollar, your life is not going to dramatically improve by just card cutting. No. And, 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 and this fa- uh, fallacy, and it's coming from both Jagmeet Singh and Pierre Polyev that they're going to lower grocery prices. It's just, if anybody... They're not going to do that. If anybody is naive enough to believe that they could even possibly do that in a free market economy, again, I have some wonderful oceanfront property in northern Saskatchewan to sell you. Yes. You're going to love it. As we've been saying on this show now for a while, the one lesson that we all should have learned from the post-pandemic supply chain, inflation, Mm -hmm. whole thing, is that corporations will charge the price they believe the market can bear. That's now, it. When we had shortages in storage place things and inventory stuff and higher transportation costs and all that kind of stuff, yes, prices did go up as they should during mm-hmm. those cases. But prices went up way more than they should have because corporations were saying, well, gee, we have to raise the prices because of fuel and supply and whatnot. Okay. Oh, people are still buying stuff. Hmm. Let's test these little motherfuckers out to see how much they're willing to pay for stuff before they start screaming. Well, here, here's that's the, where they went. That's, that's what exactly they did. where they went. That's exactly where. And they then went. we started screaming. Yeah. So then all of a sudden, right? Because when Loblaws turned around and said, "said you know what?" It's like, yeah, the our our meat and vegetables that are about to expire that we're selling at fifty percent, fifty percent off. We're only going to sell them at thirty three percent off now. And people went, "Whoa!" When they, you know, Frills turned around and said, don't go to your farmer's markets. Come here instead. And everybody went, whoa, no, 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 no. We didn't say don't support your farmer's markets. <laughs> because every now and then, when the people go, whoa, they go, no, 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 no we didn't mean that. Mm-hmm. Because, and then they pull back. Well, and, every gimmick gas price cut by a conservative premier, mm-hmm. we're going to cut the provincial tax on gas by five cents. Did you see that? No. No. Because the corporations just raised it by five. What makes you think they're not going to do the same thing with the percentage of price that represents carbon regulatory pricing? You're already paying it. They already know you're willing to pay it. They already know that you're able to afford it, even though maybe you can't. So it's just going to be a one-for-one transfer. It's going to be a de facto subsidy of these corporations. It's a subsidy by another name. Mm -hmm. when the government says, I'm going to cut the gas tax by five cents a liter and the gas companies do not reduce that price, it's a subsidy to the gas company that is being marketed, marketed as a deal for you. This type of cut is completely ineffective if it doesn't come with accompanying legislation that forbids the corporation from taking, clawing it back. Bingo. And we know liberals didn't do it, and you can bet your ass that conservatives are not going to do that because capitalism and profits. Well, and, so and don't this, count on that. This, when somebody's this, telling you this, I want to finish that. When somebody is telling you that, they are telling you to your face, "I think you're stupid, and I'm treating you as such, and I'm counting on you being too lazy or too stupid to go do the math yourself." Don't vote for people who tell you to your face, I think you're stupid, and treat you like that. And this is the thing. Sobeys would lower prices in individual stores to make local run stores suffer and close. It happens systemically, and farmers' markets were a way to resist. The corporations will target them. Walmart has been doing this for decades. Mm -hmm. Go to any small town in Canada and the United States where they've opened a Walmart supercenter. And look at the front street where people used to shop. Most of those storefronts are empty. Or if they've reopened, they've reopened as a chain, a fast food chain, or a fast coffee chain. Or the thing I saw in a small town recently was several, several stores. I think there was three within a 20 meter space of one another that were selling you know, like I'll say tchotchkes, antiques, not, they weren't pawn shops per se, but basically pawn shops Mm -hmm. where everything you walked in and buy, you know, old stuff that people don't want anymore and they sell to them and then they turn around and resell it. It's like, 
I see so many of those, so many pawn shops, so many used goods stores these days, so many stores where there, there's the, the, the name is Dollar, Dollar Rama, Dollar Tree, Dollar mm-hmm. whatever, Dollar It. And they say we're doing good. Well, somebody is, but it isn't you and I. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. the other thing, Mr. Jim, payday loan outlets. Yes. Those yeah. are predatory too. Definitely predatory. One of the reasons why we could uh, use a microcredit program, yes, for example. Um, because people use payday loans because they have to. Yep. And the problem is the interest rate is, I think it works out to like 49.9%. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. I've had to use them. Do I like admitting that? No. Do I like that I had to? No. I've had to use them. Why? Because wage stagnation over the last 50 years has caused situations where people are living hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck. And they're like, well, just cut back on this. I'm like, I don't know what else to cut back on. Mm. I got to keep a roof over my head. I have an internet connection and I have to have a fast one to run this show. But I've cut back on everything I can think of. You know what the last time I went out for coffee was? When? Oh God, I can't even remember. That's how long ago it was. Do I still go to the pub for a beer? Yeah, I do. But you know what I've reverted to now? I drink the cheapest beer on the menu and I have two. Because hmm. I don't have a choice. I'll just drink beer at home. Yes, that's right. Have no social life whatsoever. I could always give up beer, but I don't drink soda. So I suppose I could drink non-alcoholic beer, but guess what? It's the same damn price. So why don't I have two of what I enjoy? I don't, not, I don't know when this date's from because there's no date here, but I'm reading something from adamsontrustee.com. It says, uh, when it talks about payday loans, currently in Ontario, the maximum interest rate on payday loans is 391%. Oh, 300 Maximum payday loan cost lender can charge you is $15 per 100 borrowed. That's already 15%. In order to be exempt from the federal government's interest rate cap of 60%, payday loans cannot exceed 1500 and you must repay it within 62 days. As stated, the federal government intends to lower the maximum interest rates charged on payday loans to $14 per 100 Oh, a whole cent. A whole dollar. A whole dollar. Wow. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, and then they had... Uh, The federal and provincial governments govern Ontario's interest rates. That is because the provinces have to comply with laws set by the federal government. Payday loans, however, are governed by provincial law. As a result, interest rates for payday loans can vary from 35% in Quebec. Mm -hmm. Seem to have tackled the problem, even though 35% is ridiculously high. To 548% in Newfoundland and Labrador. It's predatory lending. And you know where those payday loan places always are located? in the neighborhoods where the average income is lower than anywhere else. Yes. Uh, and this, the date was at the end. It's from uh, April 8, 2023, from John Adamson, a CPA and CMA. Um, so uh, there have probably have been some slight changes to the law since then. But yeah, you got good kids swanky. Yep, borrow 300, you pay back 345. So um, <clears throat> now since we were talking about food, Mr. Grizzly, uh, and... Uh, We've had a conservative leader, Pierre Poliev, as we mentioned on yesterday's show, criticizing the school food program, quote, co- which quote, hasn't costs, fed anybody yet. costs millions but hasn't fed a single meal during summer, of course, <sighs> and suggested that its purpose is to feed more liberal bureaucracy and CBC headlines instead of hungry kids. Well, today, uh, the Prime Minister, only a bit, mm-hmm. only a little over two months after unveiling the details of his government's bid to create and deliver the National Food, Food Program, outlined in the last budget, and saying that it includes an investment of $1 billion over five years. It will provide meals to up to 400,000 more kids every year. He's set to provide an update on the plan during an afternoon visit to Newfoundland and Labrador this afternoon. It will be held at around 2.25 p.m. Newfoundland time, joining him for the on-camera announcement, which, as per his office, will take place at an undisclosed location in the western region of the province. I like that he's not telling people where. (laughs) I like this now because 
I guess so. Pre- be prepared to hear some journalists scream. Yeah. On behalf of the people that would like to attend these things and disrupt them. Yes. Um, joining him from the on-camera announcement will be Social Development Minister Jenna Suds. That's kind of makes sense that she would be there. Mm-hmm. And Newfoundland Labrador Premier Andrew Fury, with two Atlantic Canadian frontbenchers, Agriculture Minister Lawrence McCauley and Rural Development Minister Goody Hutchings, also are also expected to be there. Uh, from the government of from the Prime Minister of Canada's press release on this. So uh, this is from June 20th, 2024. Um, oh, it's from June 20th. Okay, I thought they were really releasing to something today. But mm-hmm. it says, with an investment of $1 billion over for five years, the National School Food Program included in Budget 2024 will provide meals uh, up to 400,000 more kids every year beyond those served by existing school food programs. So in addition to those who are already being served. This will mean peace of mind for parents and healthy meals for kids, helping them learn, grow, and get the best start in life. On average, the National School Food Program is expected to save participating families with two kids up to $800 a year in grocery bills. There you go. And then goes on to say, the National School Food Program is part of our work to support families and make life cost less. This includes the Canada Child Benefit, which is providing families with up to $7,437 per child this benefit year. Canada Wild Early Canada Wide Early Learning and Child Care, which has already reduced fees for regulated child care by half on average across the country, and the Canadian Dental Care Plan, which will make trips to the dentist more affordable for up to 9 million uninsured Canadians. Confident countries invest in themselves, and these investments grow and build our communities, our families, and our economy. So uh, pay attention there if you're interested in the National School Food Program. Because, the, like I said, there'll be an announcement about 2.30 p.m. Uh, Newfoundland time. Um, so that's an important bit of news today. Um, there's other stuff, but you know what? I, I would like to talk Paralympics a little bit, Mr. Grizzly, if you, you would agree to that. Sure, sure. I'm cool with that. Okay. I like that very much. Because um, there has been some success kits and cups excellent yes yes indeed ah for somehow interesting the paralympics report has not come in uh today oh, that's weird huh interesting from the newest thing so i'll just look at uh, the medals uh at the moment um and canada now has 15 of them three oh, awesome. gold five silver and seven bronze so uh some people have been uh, raking in the hardware uh, for Team Canada. Now, there is, uh, according to the news, uh, um, yesterday, I'm guessing, this is the third, yes, Canada won its second gold medal of the Paralympics, and that was a gold by wheelchair racer Cody Forney mm-hmm. in the men's T51 200 meters, and uh, swimmer Katie Cosgriff added a bronze in the women's 100 meter butterfly S10 category, and uh, over here, uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, I have a picture of uh, Canada's second gold medalist. There he is. Blow it up there. There we go. So he's a 35-year-old gentleman from Victoria, Cody Forney. Well done. Well done, sir. Um, congratulations to you. And uh, we have a very, very, very grateful nation as a result. Uh, Forney uh, also... Uh, won a silver in the 100 meters at this year's World Championships in Japan and uh, will be returning uh, for that event uh, in Paris on Friday. So he has an opportunity for another medal. Uh, The 200 has always been the most difficult for me, so it's something my coach and I have worked on the hardest, Forney said. I executed the race perfectly. Uh, Canada had a group of other medal hopefuls on the track yesterday, but none of them uh, panned out. Uh, Marisa Papakonstian... Oh, sorry, let me try that. Marisa Papa Constantinou finished fourth in the women's T64 200 meter final. Sheriana Hassa was also fourth in the women's T47 100 meter. Zach Jengra placed fifth in the men's T38 400 meter. And Bianca Borghella went down with an apparent hamstring injury in the women's T13 100 meter, but still managed to get up and finish the race. And according to uh, Devin Haru, uh, he has an update on her saying, I've been told by Athletics, Athletics Canada she's in the medical center here at the Stade de France and is being assessed and Team Canada doctor updates as I get them uh, coming your way. Uh, and then uh, 
I'll just be scanning his stuff here. But uh, another update from uh, 21 minutes ago from uh, him. After her injury last night in the Paralympic final, in her Paralympic final debut, I've been told by Athletics Canada she's undergoing further medical assessment this afternoon. It's expected she would get an update on her condition sometime today. So uh, we are waiting for that. Um, there are more medals. I'm going to just go uh, through Devin Haru's feed, uh, okay. given that I didn't get the update here. Um, this might be from today, so uh, I hope I'm not spoiling stuff, but I think I might be here. Um, so uh, if you are planning to watch Paralympics coverage today and don't want me to um, spoil stuff, um, yeah, don't 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 don't, don't, don't say that. You might I want what to you're about tune to say, out for, for the next that. two minutes. We don't ever want you to tune out. No, no, but I mean, if you like, just, you might want to put us on mute for a couple of minutes and mm, like this. I'll give you a thumbs up when it's time to come back. If you don't want it spoiled, because I, I, when I watch sports like this, you know, when I'm watching it, uh, when I'm planning to watch a tennis match, particularly if I'm watching it later, I guess I do everything I can. I avoid Twitter. I avoid, mm. you know, the news, whatnot, because eventually somebody blurts something out and then I find out. And then for me, it's not as interesting to watch if I know how it's going to end before it yeah, starts. Yeah, I, I, see, here's the thing for me. You can tell me who won the game. I still want to watch the game because yeah. I want to see how it played out. For me, usually not. That's the way I am. Yeah, I, I know the end of a movie. I know how the movie's going to end. I still want to watch it. I mean, some of I them, like, the story. Like, like Titanic, you know, yeah. I kind of knew. I kind of <laughs> knew. But I still want to see the movie Apollo thirteen. I know they make it back home. Yeah, <laughs> you want to see the you want to see the journey. <laughs> yes. So I mean, but sometimes for me, it, I know that there's some people that's like, ah, oh, well, I know the score that ruined it. So, so just um, there is so go and I put. Uh, <laughs> um, we have a shot put. You know what? A shot put gold medal. Yes, I saw. I that. will just say that. Yes. All right. From out of retirement, by the way. Yes. Um, and then let's see. So that was the, the first track and field gold. Um, there we go. Uh, then there was a medal in a Paralympic cycling. You know, what? I, I'm not going to cut it. Though. I'm going to say it because they deserve to be mentioned. So Greg Stewart is the person that, that won uh, the gold medal in the shot put. And uh, over here, there are some images of... Uh, them playing our song at uh, the Stade de France. Our song, the national anthem? Yes, they're playing our song. So there he is on the podium, looking at the flag going up. Mm -hmm. So uh, congratulations. And he came out of retirement for that yeah. too. This is Craig Stewart, uh, the gentleman uh, in question. So congratulations to you and thank you so much for everything you're doing for Canada. Uh, then Nathan Clément, uh, this morning, won his first Paralympic medal, a cycling silver. So, um, and there's images of him, Mr. Grizzly. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to go here. Here we go. So, uh, I can make this bigger. So, there you go. There's Nathan Clema. Congratulations to you, as he's uh, going to have the uh, metal silver put around his neck yes yeah you raise that you raise those arms yes sir there you go <laughs> i've i i love seeing people receive their medals mm. just the pure joy like you can't fake that you no can't no fake that not at all uh and who else do we have here um Greg Stewart. Uh, yeah, that's Nathan Clema again. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Kits and Cubs, uh, for this not being as smooth because the report did not come in. Um, and then we have, yeah, uh, that's Katie Cosgriff again. You know what? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to do this tomorrow. Yeah. And have it better prepared rather than having you listen to me. Uh, Search. Fumble. <laughs> fumble, fumble and stumble. And, fumble and stumble. Uh, yeah. I see that Kit Elaine said that uh, you sent me something somewhere, but I don't know where that somewhere is because when you say my inbox, I, I have like five or six of them. Yeah. Which which one? We, we have the one on Twitter. We have the one on Facebook. We have my personal one. We have the, uh, 
the so email. Well, you have to be really specific when you say you send it to my inbox. Which one? Because I which have like five or six to check. Um, and it's, so, for me, Elaine, it's probably on your Facebook because Elaine yeah. doesn't have Twitter. Yes, right. So it'd be a Facebook DM, I would assume. Okay, good. I will check that out there. Yes, there we go. Sent you. Uh, no, that's See, I'm on the ball. That's that's from 18 hours ago, so it can't be that one. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much, Kit Elaine. Here. Oh no, that's just. Uh, Try the show's Facebook. Yeah, that's not working either, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, I will. Uh, I, I will have them prepared uh, tomorrow. I'm so sorry that I wasn't able to celebrate everyone as they should be. Uh, right now, um, that's but fine. right now I, I'm just I just have a link to a, CB, to a CBC page, and I have to still scan through for the uh, the articles and the titles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yes, we are now at uh, 15 medals, uh, 21 on uh, the medal board uh, because they always list by golds first and not by. Mm -hmm. uh, but a couple of days ago, we were at like 46 or something. So with the gold medals coming in, uh, we up. are we are moving up, but uh, still 15 medals which is a very, very, very good. Uh, I can't remember how many we had in, uh, where were the Olympics last time? Oh my God, I'm just drawing a blank. What, uh, Tokyo. 2020 in Tokyo? Yes, <laughs> well, 2021 technically. Yeah, technically. Uh, but yeah, Paralympic results and, uh, oh God. Nothing yeah, is here. completing. N nothing, nothing is cooperating. Yeah, don't worry about here. it. It happens. It, it, these things do take place. Y we got to get your new computer operational, dude, because you, you still yeah, use yeah, No, no, one. it's not the new computer. It's just every time you go on a website, they ask you to, like, do you want to accept these cookies? It's like, just take me to the damn just information. Just the damn thing, yeah. Uh, so yeah. last time it was 21 medals, five gold, uh, eight silver, six. So we're only four off the total of last time. And uh, if we do get, if we do break 19, it will be the first time uh, in a while where our number of medals from Paralympics to Paralympics go up rather than go down. Because remember yesterday I was reporting that, uh, you know, don't be discouraged by the lower number of medals over time because it's just a sign that the Paralympic movement is getting stronger and that more countries are participating, God more countries are spending it. athletes. But, whoops. I got scammed. Oh, no. I called yesterday. Well, so... <sighs> Uh, I had uh, ARMMP.com. I've never heard of this thing before in my entire life. And I got a call from Visa Debit saying, uh, we suspect fraudulent activity on your account. So I looked it up. There are 13 charges from a company I've never heard of in my life for a total of $750 taken from my account. I called. Visa Debit says, we're on it right away. We'll cancel your card. We'll send you a new one. So I don't have a bank card right now, which is a pain in the ass. But now <sighs> I have to fight to get my money back because I really need another $750 hit. Sorry, I'm just... <sighs> like, what, what more can you throw at me, universe? What more? What more? I mean, just go ahead. Bring it on. Bring it on. <sighs> yeah, like literally multiple charges from a company I've never heard of in my life, ARMMP.com. And I looked it up. It's Armenian Marketplace. Yeah. That's Not buying anything from them. So I'm out $750 and I have to fight with Visa to get it back. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, since we're doing that, let's uh, give uh, the kits some uh, information here. Uh, ARMPP, Armenian Marketplace. This is literally what the website looks like. Welcome to the platform which helps the customers to find what they really need and allows them to expand sellers' capabilities. Um, yeah. And all the Hardly transactions. Hardly inspires any confidence here. All the transactions are in U.S. dollars. Is a worldwide digital platform aimed to connect sellers and buyers with each other. So, um, yeah. Yeah, but I can't, it's, it's like, I, I really can't. No, no, I know that. Right I know that. No, no. It's, it's, so either of you uh, made a transaction that was uh, 
somehow governed by them or ruled by them, whatnot, and then they just took your number and went crazy with it. Or, but I've I've never heard of this before. And how? No, they, no, you don't. That, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't look like somebody that you have to do uh, direct business with. It seems that they do help other people do their business. So you might have done business with someone uh, somewhat legitimate who's using them to help, and uh, they just Amazon took the number maybe. and went crazy. Well, I'm just trying to look at my Amazon purchases for the last few days, and it's like see orders and what did i order on the second because there was stuff that the only thing uh no that was august 31st or someone cloned your card and used it there as this is what says. i'm figuring somebody cloned my card uh, god and when you purchase from amazon it's vetted and you know yeah so I don't know where, how my card was cloned or where my card was cloned. I'm thinking, I'm thinking it must have been off of a database somewhere that somebody hacked because uh, I'm a creature of habit. My transactions are all within my neighborhood or via Amazon. Yeah. Or there's, or there's other third party companies I use. Yeah. Because I know I'm protected and insured and the whole bit. So how this happened, I don't know. But now I got to fight to get my money back. And I'm sure I'll get it back, but it's like, God damn it. Not cool at all. I'm so sorry. Look at this. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll send you something today so that you have some uh, cash on hand. Thank you. All right. Um, our, our, our PayPal issues are, resu are resolved uh, with finality, so I'll be able to send you something. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, but uh, don't worry. I, I, I got you. Okay. I got you. You won't be without funds because that's that's just not cool. No, and I that mean, well, I'm we're, I'm on my way to Kingston this weekend too. Do, do we we're we're tentatively going to do a pubcast on Saturday? Is yeah, tentatively. I'm I'm waiting to. I, I've written to them and I'm waiting to to hear a response from uh, the uh, Kingston Brewing uh, Company Limited to see if okay. we can use their space. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, everybody, uh, the kids on the chat are saying, don't worry, it will be resolved. You will get your money back. Uh, you won't have to fight that hard. It's just going to okay. involve a little bureaucracy, but it, it might take 15 to 30 days or something. But Well, it's going to take two weeks before I get a new card. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that's what they said last night. Like, I was uh, doing there, the dishes. And, there, yeah, but there's an emergency. There should be an emergency stuff because when my, yeah, I can get uh, a my credit card right has been... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it has been uh, screwed a couple of times, and normally it's like a week or something, but they say, you know, if it's really, really, really urgent, they could send it directly to your branch in about two or three days if you're willing well, to go there and pick it up. At, at, at the closure of this episode, which has <laughs> got to end soon because i got a meeting at 9. When that meeting yep. is over, I am going to get on the phone with them immediately and see how we can resolve this as quickly as possible because I just don't, I just don't need another yep. thing like this. But uh, I, I, I will send you something so that you're not stuck in the meantime. No, oh, thank you. Oh, it's and by the way, it's it's my Visa debit. I don't have a Visa credit card. I have one credit card. It's a Mastercard. I've had it for uh, fifteen years. It's a Visa debit card, so it's linked directly to my checking account. Ooh, so maybe I shouldn't. Has it been all canceled? And the card is canceled. But if you send me money, I can transfer it into another account that I have. I have a cash account via Wealth Simple. So if you okay. send it to me, I can transfer it to that, and I can get money immediately. Okay. Okay, uh, I, you know what? I'm going to do that uh, directly, uh, immediately after the sh after the show. Okay. Um, not going through PayPal. I'll do it from my personal account, and then I'll just I'll replenish Transfer. my personal account okay. from the from from the PayPal. Thank because, you. Because uh, yeah, that's that's not cool, and you you don't need to struggle more. No, but, I've got uh, I got you. Right now. Thanks. I man. got you. I got you. Uh, so yeah, it's like if I can uh, make it so with such that you don't need to have extra, any extra worry, I'm I'm happy to do that. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Kids and Cubs, uh, interesting way to end the show. Yeah. Sorry. It just, <laughs> no, no, you know, no, when no. you get the, yeah. No, don't, don't, do not apologize. That's a shitty thing to happen. Yeah. Again, right? There are shitty people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The people, and the, and then there are people also, you know, when we showed you images of those bot farms a while ago. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. Grizzly, I remember you saying, it's like, I don't blame the people that work there. They got to earn a living. But yeah. the people who set those things up, I shitty people. Them. Yeah. Shitty people. All right. So uh, just, uh, but don't let the fact 
that there are shitty people. Change who you are. Yes. Be smarter, be wiser, be more cautious, that type of stuff, but don't, don't let it jade you or, you know, turn you negative. I mean, there, there always have been shitty people and scammers. Oh yeah. Right. So, uh, but it, it sucks. It sucks because most of us are just trying to be, do, do our best, get yes. by, be good people and leave the place a little better than we found it. And then we got some people that insist on not rowing in the same direction as the rest of the team. Uh, this is sage advice from Angela. Uh, be super careful with free Wi-Fi. I don't use free Wi-Fi. I have unlimited on my phone. So uh, if if I'm in the event of where I'm in a location, I need to open up my laptop and do some work. I just hotspot to my phone because I'm uh, the only free Wi-Fi I use is at the pub because I know it. Mm -hmm. I know the owner. I know it's safe. I know who installed it. I know what equipment they're using. I know it's okay. But yeah, you're right. You walk into a place. Hey, for our free Wi-Fi. Nope. <laughs> it's always a risk. Mm. Indeed, indeed. All right, kids and cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. We hope that you love listening to us because we loved making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. You have the mouths from which we want the words to come. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us. And if you would like to help us, or by, for example, not missing an episode, you don't have to, thanks to the Ray Girl. If you scan that QR code that has just appeared on the screen, that will bring you to our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And when you click on, when you quick, when you click on subscribe, <laughs> uh, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. Now, if you would like to support us in other ways, then you need to make like Kit Elaine and surf yourself on down to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page. And there we have three buttons for you to lick, click, and flick. Like, share, and subscribe. There's Kit Elaine there telling us to remember to smash the button before you leave. Thank you so much, dear one. We always appreciate that from you. <laughs> so uh, go click those and that makes us very happy if you would like to help us in other ways the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head will bring you to our coffee page that's coffee ko-fi.com slash eager beaver lowercase letters all in one word and uh, so uh, that's the place you go that if you like what we do and would like to encourage us support us uh, you know tell us that you would like us to do more um, if you leave a little donation there, doesn't matter how little, we appreciate every donation. That helps us uh, operate the show and cover our fees. And we are very, very grateful for anything that you can contribute to there. And, and it's like you want to say something, sir. You can do it through the coffee account, or you could even uh, transfer funds via the True North Eager Beaver Gmail account, and you can, uh, Mr. Mr. Beaver can move the funds around accordingly. Yes, yes. Um, so, yes, because there are fees for things. So, uh, if you transfer, if you just want to say, if you want us to get 100%, whatever mm -hmm. it is that you want to donate, uh, just send us a money transfer to True North Eager Beaver at gmail.com and we will be able to deposit. But if you appreciate the convenience of uh, coffee, uh, the fees are very, very, very minimal for us. Yes. And uh, so we, we get uh, an overwhelming amount, uh, way over 90% of what it is that uh, you donate there. Um, and then donates uh, donations through Super Chat and whatnot uh, come with a 30% fee. Yes. That goes to YouTube. So that, that's the least effective way, uh, but it's the most convenient way, especially if you're watching on YouTube because you're already there and you don't have to go anywhere else. So there are various options, uh, but uh, if you are conscious about your dollar and uh, you want it to go more of it to go to us than to a service, uh, a direct email transfer is the absolute best way. That's 100%. Then PayPal, way over 90%, and then YouTube, which is 70%. Right? just so you can uh, make an informed choice as a consumer as to where your money goes. Indeed. Uh, we're not telling you to pick one way or another. That's your choice. All right. Just like we don't tell you for whom to vote, but we might tell you whom not to vote for. <laughs> <laughs> because democracy is something that you do. Uh, By-elections coming up in Elmwood, Transcona, in La Salle, Villemar, Verdun. So please plan your vote and bring someone with you. Of course, we have some by-elections come up in Ward 15 in Toronto. The nominations close on September 19th there. So if you're looking to throw your hat in the ring, uh, please, uh, well, you have a limited amount of time now, but it's not too late. Um, <laughs> 
And uh, let's see, I think that'll probably be it for me today. Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? <sighs> yeah, it's tough now. I know. I, I Had I asked not, you that... Try, try not to let... Minutes, the, yeah, I know. Had try I asked you to, that 15 minutes ago, it would have been easier. Yeah, try not to let the things that get you down get you down too much. That's all I really got for today. Yes. And I will add one. When something happens... Talk to your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Good friends are willing to help. This is true. All right. Mr. Grizzly, please cue the cock. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. Mm. All right, a couple little notes. We have some news from Kits. Uh, Kit Swanky Frankie, I believe, had a job interview or has one coming up. So, um, if it's already passed, I hope it went well. I'm sure you were fantastic. If it is to come, don't worry, my friend. You'll be great. I just know it. Um, happy birthday to uh, Kit Linda's husband, Mr. Linda. I believe celebrated a birthday yesterday. So uh, we hope that everything uh, went well. Uh, Kit Linda mentioned that she was going to make an apple something on uh, that day. So uh, I hope that the celebrations were wonderful. And uh, we asked about some Dantham pets, and uh, Kit PNC Bio sent us some, some photos. Um, he sent us four. Uh, I will show one today uh, for you because I know that uh, Mr. Grizzly has to go, but uh, I will show the others. Uh, this is uh, Kits and Cubs, Monty. So uh, please say hello to Monty. Yesterday we saw Milo, and ooh. Uh, Maine That's Coon? a handsome fella. Is he a Maine Coon? I, I do not know breeds of cats, but it looks like um, a Maine Coon. There's a show I, I listen. There's a show that I listen to called The Daily Beans. So that looks like a man cat face. Yeah, it's, Maine but, Coons tend to have a, a human-like look to them almost. Mm-hmm. Gee, those eyes. Yeah. Ooh. All right, all right, kids and cubs. Mwah. Have a beautiful, terrific day. I'll see you.